Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to know how to use the average if or average ifs function. So in my example, I've got a list of reviews. I've got the date of the review, the reviewer's name, the restaurant they reviewed, the location of the restaurant and the rating they gave. So initially we're going to use average if with one criteria. So we'll create an average rating for each location and then say for each restaurant. But then we want to look at multiple criteria we might want to know the average rating in each of these locations for a particular restaurant and then also for a particular date period. Okay, so let's start off with this simple example. So equals average if. Now you'll see that there are actually two versions. You've got average if and then average ifs. Average if only allows you to apply one criteria whereas average ifs allows you to apply one or more criteria. So if you only want to learn one of these functions, then learn average ifs. So that's what we'll look at in this video. So your first argument is average range. So that's saying, what values do you want to base the average calculation on? So don't forget, we're doing this based on ratings. We're calculating the average rating for each of these locations. So our average range is this rating column here, column E. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first rating in E2 and then I could manually select down to the bottom of the column but it's quite a long column so I'm going to use a shortcut key instead control shift down arrow key so that takes me all the way down to the bottom now to get back to my formula I could either scroll up manually or I could use control backspace that takes me back to my formula so my average range is column E comma the next thing it's asking for is criteria range one. So what's the range that you want to apply your criteria to? So our criteria for this average calculation is the location. So it's saying which column in your data has that location. So that's column D for me. So I select D2, and it's control shift down arrow key to select down to the bottom of the data, control backspace to get you back to your formula comma so the final argument we're going to use here is criteria one so this relates to criteria range one where is the criteria that you're going to apply to this range well it's here we're looking for chicago in this column and then we're going to calculate the average of the corresponding ratings in this column so all i need to do is close the bracket and press enter and it calculates the average rating for Chicago. Now, I don't want to have to write that formula again for each of these locations. I want to be able to copy this formula down. Now we can do that, but what we do have to do is lock these two references here. If we don't lock those references, these range references will move down as we copy the formula down. Now to lock those references, what you do is you select the range and you press F4 at the top of your keyboard. Now, if F4 doesn't work and you're on a laptop, try holding down the FN key, which would be towards the bottom of your keyboard, and also press F4. If that doesn't work, then just type the dollars in as you see them there. So I'm going to do the same here, F4, and then I'm going to press Enter. And now I'll better copy that formula down to work out the average ratings for each of these locations. Now, there's a lot of decimal points there, so what I'd probably do is go up here and decrease the decimal places. Probably one decimal place will suffice. Okay, so let's do the same thing, but for the restaurants. So equals average ifs. My average range, again, is the rating, so I click in the first rating, control shift down arrow key. Now, Previously, we used control backspace to get back to our formula, which you can do again if you want to. But also if you press F4 to lock that range reference, that will also take you back to your formula. So comma, criteria range one. Now, it's not location this time, as it was in this example, it's the restaurant column, because this is our criteria. And our criteria range is the column we're applying that criteria too. So in this example, it's column C. 
So I select the first restaurant name, control shift down arrow key, and then F4 to lock the range reference, comma, and then it's asking for the criteria for that range. And the criteria is in J4, the restaurant that we're basing the calculation on. So I close the bracket, press enter, and then I can copy this down, change the decimal places, and I have the answers for each restaurant. Now, those were simple examples with one criteria. What if we have more than one criteria? So we want to find the average rating for Joe's Pizzas in each of these locations. So I can use average ifs again. My average range is as before, the ratings column, and I'm locking that, comma, criteria range one. So we'll say that our criteria range one is the location. And I'm gonna lock that, comma, and the criteria for that range is here, comma. Now, criteria range two, that's going to relate to the particular restaurant. So the range is column C, and I'm locking that, comma. And my criteria for that range is here. And I also need to lock that, because I'm going to be copying the formula down. So the only thing that isn't locked here is the location name. We don't need to lock that because as we copy the formula down, we want it to refer to the new location on each of these rows. So I close the bracket and press enter, copy this down. And these are ratings for that particular restaurant in each of those locations. So you need to get used to the numbering system here. Criteria one is used for criteria range one. Criteria two is used for criteria range two. And look, you can keep going, criteria range three, criteria three, and so on and so forth. Now let's do one more. We're gonna do it for a date range. So we want to calculate an average rating for each of these locations during January and February. So equals average ifs. We know the average range is our ratings column. Criteria range one, that's our location column. Criteria one is the particular location, comma. Now criteria range two, that's going to be the date column. And I'm locking that, comma. Now for our date criteria, we're specifying that the first date that we want to include is the 1st of January. And the last date we want to include is the 29th of February. Now we actually have to specify this as two separate criteria. The first criteria would be greater than or equal to the 1st of January. Now you do have to put that criteria within quotation marks. If you're using a comparison operator like we are there, the greater than comparison operator, you need to put your criteria in quotation marks. We then specify a second criteria based on the same column. And I'm looking at that. And the criteria for this range is less than and equal to the 29th of February, 2024. So if I close the bracket there and press enter, I then get a calculation for those particular months. Double click to copy it down change the decimal places, and I'm done. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.